Okay, here we go. So this is me and Gene, Buddy, Bud Pa, at the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco, California. It's August 13th, 2014. So my first question is, tell me again about Anna McCarthy and Tim when they came from Ireland. They didn't know each other, but they met here. Tell me a little bit about that. All right, uh, Anna, who I don't know whether I remember her or, you know, I have a real memory of her, but she died when I was quite small. Uh, I remember her sister, uh, who was a nun, Sister Patricia, and, uh, uh, and I'll come back to her, but uh, Anna came over as a young woman at uh, 16 with her sister, uh, an older, an older wo a woman who had a young baby uh, and her husband. So the, so the, the sister and her husband and baby and uh, my grandmother uh, came together and uh, The people from that general area of Ireland, uh, West Cork, uh, for some reason ended up in Elizabeth, New Jersey. You know, so, uh, somebody had come and then others followed. And uh, as far as I know, uh, Tim, who was also from West Cork, uh, but from maybe uh, 20 miles away from where Anna was from, uh, also came to Elizabeth, and uh, they met there. And uh, we have two cousins, and I had figured out at one point uh, who they were, but I can't tell you anymore. Two separate cousins who were mayors of Elizabeth. Um, anyway, uh, Tim's sister, Mary, uh, Mary McCarthy was her uh, birth name. She was uh, married to a saloon keeper in Bayonne. And then widowed, and then ended up owning the saloon. And she married another saloon keeper uh, in Maine. So they were pretty affluent. Uh, so anyway, back to uh, Anna and Tim. They uh, he had a lot of uh, uh, kind of laboring jobs. Uh, on one of the census forms, it said he was an iron molder. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have uh, an employment record of his where he worked for a railroad uh, in Bayonne, but the railroad is from the uh, coal fields of Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, they, they were married. Uh, they had uh, four children, uh, uh, Dan, John, uh, Uncle Pat, and uh, my mother, who was a baby. And they lived uh, at 16 Evergreen Street in Bayonne, right, in a big house, or, you know, not a big mansion by any means. And that house had no running water. Uh, outdoor toilet and a well and uh, they were all born I think they were born uh, what you might call at home but not in that house uh, they previously lived on Broadway in Bayonne right around the corner and I think that's where uh, three, three of them and maybe all four of them were born Hmm. But anyway, uh, Anna then was left as a young widow with uh, four little kids. 
Do you recall what ta Tim died of? Uh, and how old he was? He was pretty young, uh, 40s maybe. Hmm. And he, uh, I think he may have had his uh, lungs uh, impaired with, uh, you know, industrial dust, really, mm. coal dust, because he worked on the railroad. And, uh, I'm not sure this is where I have this information from, but I, the trains used to come in from Pennsylvania to Bayonne, right there where the house was that, that they lived in. A different house, let me come back to that. Uh, and then they'd pull the coal cars on a, on a, like a gantry over the water, be a barge underneath, They'd open the bottom of the coal cars and the coal would go down into the barge and that would then be towed over to uh, Manhattan or Brooklyn. Uh, so uh, the coal dust there probably impaired his health. Hmm. Uncle Dan, this is, I'm really rambling here, but... Oh, is no, that right? that's, this is good. Uncle Dan uh, had plans for his own funeral. Numerous kind of plans. We wanted a priest with a certain amount of experience. Mm. <laughs> so many years, he had that figured out. But he wanted to be buried out of a wooden church. And the reason for that was uh, not that he was much for going to church uh, after the 1930s, uh, but he. The, funeral plans were out of a wooden church because his father, when Dan was a little boy, uh, would go, having worked six days a week, on Sunday would go over to Elizabeth, take the train over there, to work on building a big stone church in Elizabeth, oh. volunteering. And uh, Dan resented that and didn't want anything to do with it. Stone Church. Oh, that's so interesting. I've never heard that story. Yeah. Do you recall the, the name of the church? I don't. Yeah. Uh, um, no, so Anna then had to raise four children by herself. She never remarried. That's right. Uh, now, she uh, ran a boarding house, is that right? Yeah. My mother's story that she told, she loved to tell it, actually, was that after Tim died, and then he had... Uh, and I wish I had written this down, you know, like 40 years ago. But he had a very big funeral. Because among other things, he used to attend bar in his sister's saloon. And he was evidently a very popular uh, man. And he had a, a funeral with uh, many, many cars, uh, uh, horse carriages. Following the following the hearse, and that would have been about when? About 1910. Uh, so your mother would have only been about a year old. Yeah, a couple years old, maybe. Yeah. Wow. But uh, the story my mother liked to tell was is that uh, somebody and maybe she a little diversion here first, but. My mother's name, as far as you and I know, was Marie. And actually on her birth certificate, or baptismal certificate, it says Maria. But when Tim was going to take the baby to be christened, and the mothers didn't go, I don't know whether that's still the case in the Catholic Church, but... Uh, she said to Tim, if you have her baptized Mary, don't bring her back. Because she didn't get along with her sister-in-law, Mary. Oh, wow. And uh, she had a very sharp tongue. And my mother used to rejoice in that. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
anyway, when she was widowed, somebody, and it might have been the same Mary, uh, said, well, you'll have to put them in a home. Uh, and uh, Anna replied, if there were four more of them, I wouldn't put them in a home. Wow. Um, so she, she raised them by herself. We're running a boarding house. Uh, no running water. Do you remember her? I don't know whether I remember her or not. You know. I, what what year did she die? She died when I was about four, like mm. 1936, I think. Yeah. And um, I think I remember her, but I don't. I'm not positive that it's an actual memory. You know. Yeah. Um, But as I said, I, I do remember her sister, who was quite a powerful, uh, she was a mother superior in, uh, at this school there in Bayonne, and very connected with, uh, very big in her uh, order. And Uncle Pat used to say that, uh, we called her Aunt Ellen. And your mother knew her, your mother's a bit older than I am. And uh, your mother knew her, and um, we called her Aunt Ellen. Her, her church name was Sister Patricia. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pat told me, Uncle Pat told me that uh, uh, Aunt Ellen used to go back to Ireland and enlist young women into the uh, order and bring them over to New York. And uh, and then they would uh, they would jump ship or whatever you call it and, and take off. And <laughs> <laughs> so they they said they would they would commit to, to becoming nuns and that they just wanted the free passage. Yeah. So <laughs> and Uncle Pat telling me the story said, you know, don't you know they're gonna do that? She they apparently did it two or three times and went over and and she said, Oh, uh, you know, I know they're gonna do it, but you know, they need they need a chance in life, you know, and so it didn't bother her much at all, I guess. And that's a great story. Um, so of the four children, um, Dan was the oldest, and he was a boiler maker. Yeah, he uh, when he was. These are all numbers that I just will make up, but they'll be roughly right. When he was about eight, he uh, got a job at a bakery uh, around, the, around the corner on Broadway in, in Bayonne. Not Reeves Bakery. Huh? Not Reeves. R-E-I-T-H. I don't, I don't... Because that was the bakery he always brought cakes from. Oh, yeah. No, that was different. Yeah, okay. Was, but, um... And he, um... He drove a horse and wagon at, at eight or nine years old. And then when he left that, you know, he was capable of another job, you know, 10 or 12, Uncle Pat took that job. And so the boys were working very young. And then, uh, I don't know how far he got in school. Uh, I'm sure he never went to high school, but whether he got even as far as the eighth grade, I don't know. Now, what did Pat do for a living? Pat, um, Pat went to, um, uh, again, I don't know how far he got in school, but, um, Later, he went to uh, the Pratt Institute in, uh, in New York, uh, an art, art college or, or institute. And he was pretty trained as an artist. And, and, uh, he, was, he was pretty good. You, uh, you might have had some of his paintings in your house. I remember. And, uh, but he came out of that uh, like... Uh, the whole generation of people, like the kids right today, uh, there were just no jobs, you know, in the 1930s. And uh, 
he became a, uh, a sign painter uh, for Gulf Oil, uh, doing their, uh, they used to have these big orange signs, and, uh, and you know, he did the lettering and all that, and, and, and that's what he did. And he, and he would, um, um, he had one job, there used to be an airport in Jersey City, you know, a little small airport, and uh, he he bid on and got the job of painting the roof of the uh, call it a control tower, but you know, a big, big building. And uh, he um, he didn't bid enough, and, and he was running out of paint. He, was t he told me this story too, and he kept adding turpentine and thinning it out, you know. And <laughs> Getting the roof covered, but uh, there's a lot of stories like that. But, uh, so he kind of scuffled around, and then um, he got a job uh, as a uh, security guard for Westinghouse, and I think Jersey City. I'm not, I'm not sure where it was, but he was a uh, he had a 38 revolver. And he was a, quite a marksman. He won uh, prizes. And he had that steady hand of an artist, you know. And, uh, uh, and he he, uh, he let me shoot that 38 uh, sometimes, and the thing was loud. You know? I, was, <laughs> I, I had a 22 of my own, and uh, you know, I can remember the 38 being so loud. Wow. I remember that he worked for Westinghouse, so that was mostly what he did his entire career. Yeah, yeah. Now, what did John do? John was a very handsome guy. Um, tall. All three of them were tall. Uh, you know, above average height for their generation. And, uh, and the, the John was a you know, to my mind, was the best looking of the three. And he got a job with a bank in Bayonne. I think it was a Bayonne Trust Company. And uh, very highly regarded. And uh, those guys, John and Dan, and, and later Pat, they used to swim there in the, the Kilvan Collins. It, it's part of New York Harbor that goes from, you know, the end of the Hudson River coming down, and it, and it connects over to, cuts off Staten Island from Bayonne, and it's a big, big uh, waterway, you know, big tankers and cargo ships go through there, and they swam over to Staten Island, 